Master Roshi is by no means the most beloved character in the Dragon Ball franchise, but that doesn't make him any less interesting. Sure, he's a perverted old man who's done things that should have put him in a jail cell a hundred times over on the surface. But beyond the overplayed gags that display his lecherous ways, Master Roshi's actually a pretty skilled fighter. So let's take a look at the character's evolution over time. Master Roshi's story begins a long time before his first appearance, as one might imagine since he is immortal after all. In order to look at the history and evolution of the character, we have to turn back the clock a few hundred years before Goku and Bulma first searched for the Dragon Balls. The earliest part of Master Roshi's life we know about came from a filler episode in which Goku traveled back in time to Roshi's youth. We're not entirely certain if the events of this episode, namely Goku traveling back in time, are part of the main canon of the series, but since since this is the only version of a young Master Roshi we've seen, we're going to take it at face value, since the episode told us a number of things about the character in his early days. For one thing, Roshi apparently wore sunglasses since he was a teenager, rocking the same signature shades in the past as the present. His sunglasses aren't the only trait that young Roshi shares with his older self either, since in the time traveling episode, we first meet Roshi as he's attempting to spy on a girl while she's bathing in a hot spring. It turns out Roshi has been a pervert from a very young age. This girl in particular was actually the girl he had a crush on, something that he and Shen, who fans know as the creator of the Crane School and the Flight Technique, had in common. In other words, the two were rivals in love. However, this rivalry eventually developed into a friendship, as the two would later become students of Master Mutaito. Master Mutaito was a very important figure in Roshi's development as a martial artist for a number of reasons. A great and powerful fighter, Mutaito developed many of the key base techniques that would develop into the signature techniques of Roshi and Shen. Under Mutaito's tutelage, the two became powerful fighters in their own right, standing as the master's greatest pupils. In fact, the two were such good fighters that that they were the only two who survived King Piccolo's assault on Mutaito's dojo. Roshi and Shen managed to hold their own, and when the battle was over, they worked to nurse their master back to health. However, Mutaito felt disgraced by his failure at the hands of King Piccolo. Thus, he left to go train on his own, hoping to develop and perfect a technique that could defeat King Piccolo once and for all. During this time, Roshi and Shen went their separate ways, their rivalry being reignited by the failure and departure of their master. Roshi fled from King Piccolo's reign, unfortunately allowing half of Earth's population to die as he hid away training. Shen, on the other hand, was changed forever, losing faith in his master after witnessing his defeat. Because of this change of heart, he wasn't present during Mutaito's second battle with King Piccolo, but Master Roshi was. After mastering the evil containment wave, otherwise known as the Mafuba, Master Mutaito located Roshi, and together they faced King Piccolo once again. Mutaito immediately used the Mafuba, which used the all of his energy. Thus, he sacrificed his life to stop King Piccolo, who had been sealed away inside a rice cooker by the evil containment wave. Roshi was devastated by the loss of his master, but he did his final words and threw the rice cooker into the middle of the ocean. Roshi was forever changed that day. Instead of being a student of Master Mutaito, he now had to become a master himself, carrying on the teachings of Mutaito when establishing his own school, the Turtle School. Before the school was established, however, two important things happened in Master Roshi's life. He gained immortality, and he created and perfected the Kamehameha technique. It's unclear when either of these happened specifically in the character's timeline, but we know for sure that they happened before he started taking on students of his own. Fast forward to Dragon Ball Super, and we eventually learned Master Roshi gained his immortality through the use of a plant called the Paradise Herb. The Paradise Herb can only be found in the Forest of Terror, which Goku and Krillin ventured to in Dragon Ball Super. In this training exercise, the two were tasked with gathering the herb, which Roshi revealed allows him to live for another thousand years upon consumption. And it can be assumed that this has been the source of his eternal life for quite some time. It can also be assumed that he discovered the herb not too long after Master Mutaito's death. Additionally, it's worth noting that Roshi's not the only one to use this herb to stay alive, as Roshi's sister, fortune teller Baba, also uses the herb to prolong her lifespan. This is just our assumption, but perhaps the reason Master 
Master Roshi sought out an extended life was so he could create and master his own technique, the Kamehameha, otherwise known as the Turtle Destruction Wave. Why he would need eternal life to create the technique? Because it took Roshi 50 years to develop the Kamehameha. Perhaps he needed the extra life to have some more time to master his technique. Or maybe, after mastering it, he wanted to stay alive to pass it down. Honestly, we don't know the exact reason. Additionally, at some point in his youth, Roshi scaled Korin's tower, fighting with Korin himself in an attempt to get the special water that was said to increase strength. But as we all know, it was the physical challenge of obtaining the water that had proved to be the true power-up. After quite a bit of time had passed, Roshi finally opened up his turtle school, taking on his first two students, the Ox King and Son Gohan, two people who'd become very important later in the timeline of Dragon Ball. Especially Gohan, since, as we all know, he found Goku as a child and raised him as his own. From then on, it's unclear if Master Roshi took on more students in the Turtle School, but this might be the case as he became known as the Great Turtle Hermit, a martial arts master who became famous around the world. This is about all we know about Master Roshi prior to his first appearance, save for the fact that he at some point met his friend Turtle, acquired and discarded the Bonsho fan, gained the flying Nimbus, and accidentally killed an immortal phoenix with tainted bird seed. Whoops. After all that happened, the character made his first appearance in Dragon Ball. After the Master's turtle friend became lost for a whole year, Goku helped him find his way back to Master Roshi, who thanked him by gifting him the flying Nimbus. It was during this first appearance that we learned of Roshi's perverted ways. Since he promised to give Goku and Bulma his Dragon Ball if the latter allowed him to see her panties. After his brief introduction, Master Roshi made his return when Goku met one of his former students, the Ox King, who needed his old mentor's help in putting out the fire that had taken hold of his castle. This is when our view of Roshi truly changed. Instead of just being some old weirdo, we learned that the bald pervert was in fact an actual martial arts master, who elevated the series to an entirely new level. By unleashing the first Kamehameha ever, Master Roshi changed the course of Dragon Ball with the new path of the series being solidified by the character's next major appearance, when he officially took Goku and Krillin in as his new students. During this training arc, we further learned that Master Roshi had a lot of wisdom beneath his perverted outer shell. Goku and Krillin went from strong to super powerful through Master Roshi's training, which consisted of doing chores and physical labor while wearing weighted turtle shells, as well as education to ensure that Goku and Krillin's minds were as sharp and strong as their bodies. With their training, the two characters were able to beat most of the competition in their matches at the Tenkaichi Budokai, or World Martial Arts Tournament. However, Master Roshi's teachings weren't finished, as he still had to teach them the value of losing in order to ensure that his students didn't get big heads and quit martial arts after their first win, Roshi disguised himself as Jackie Chun so he could compete against Goku and Krillin. Roshi believed that by doing this, he'd teach his students the lesson that there'll always be someone stronger than you, and that you can always get better. This was a brilliant move on Master Roshi's part, as Krillin admitted he might have quit martial arts if he won his first competition so easily. Goku, on the other hand, was a bit different. Master Roshi's fight with Goku while dressed as Jackie Chun was much more intense than the rest of his battles in the World Martial Arts Tournament, since Goku had become so strong. Because of this, we got to see just how powerful Master Roshi was, as the fight was the first time we'd seen the old martial artist truly give his all. Fast forward to the Red Ribbon Army saga, and Master Roshi helped Goku to defeat the evil organization by dealing with a few henchmen who invaded his island. It was a pretty badass moment for the character, but it wasn't as major of a moment as the two that had come next. First, Roshi took on yet another new student. Yamcha. Along with Krillin, he trained to learn all of the powerful techniques that Krillin and Goku had learned, making him just as much of a contender for the next martial arts tournament as Roshi's other pupils. Roshi's next major character moment came in the second world martial arts tournament of the series. Master Roshi was reunited with Master Shen, and it was made clear that their old rivalry had been reignited, with Master Shen training new pupils to be as cutthroat as possible in matches. In this tournament, we learned a bit more about Roshi, and we saw him once again bring his A-game to the tournament. However, this wasn't the character's major moment in the saga. Oh no. That came later when he learned that King Piccolo had come back. With no other choice, Master Roshi made the same sacrifice that his master had made before him, using the Mafuba in an attempt to defeat King Piccolo once again. However, Master Roshi failed in his attack and ended up using his power for nothing, leading to his death. Without the power of the Turtle Hermit, the world was in danger, but Goku managed to save the day in the end. Because of the power that Goku displayed in the tournament, as well as the power he displayed in defeating King Piccolo, it was made clear that 
Master Roshi was quickly becoming obsolete, and even Roshi himself recognized this, which is why his last major moment in the original Dragon Ball series was to step aside as the world's protector, and leave the task to Goku and his former pupils. In this decision, Roshi became rather irrelevant to the story, basically sitting out the entirety of Dragon Ball Z, serving only as a comic relief character with his trademark perverted antics. However, Master Roshi didn't stay irrelevant for long, since he made something of a triumphant return in Dragon Ball Super. Roshi's return to protecting the world began in the Golden Frieza Saga, which adapted the story of Resurrection F. In this saga, Roshi was one of the fighters who showed up to face Frieza's army, while waiting for Goku and Vegeta to fight Frieza. In the battle, Roshi powered up to his max power form, and held off his fair share of enemies. But it was just the beginning of his return to action. Roshi's most recent character arc in the franchise is arguably one of his most important. Roshi was chosen by Goku to join Universe 7's team in the Tournament of Power, and in order to train for it, he overcame his biggest character flaw, his perverted ways. By training with a shape-shifting poire, Roshi dulled his perverted senses to no longer crumble to his desires whenever facing a beautiful woman. This was a major moment for the character, as he ridded himself of the very thing that made him impossible to love, and with this newfound strength, Roshi managed to do a whole lot of good in that tournament. Not only did Master Roshi resist the charms of Kawe, a female fighter from Universe 4, but he also managed to knock her out, as well as two other opponents from this universe. Suffice it to say, Roshi proved his worth in the Tournament of Power, almost dying in the fight for his universe's survival, all of which showed that the old master was truly a great man, his actions even earning him the respect of Beerus, who referred to the mortal by his formal title of master. And that's about all there is to the story and evolution of Master Roshi. He started out as a perverted old hermit, but later proved himself to be a powerful martial artist and a selfless hero before stepping aside as a world guardian, and eventually returning to show he still had what it took to battle with the strongest and toughest opponents out there. Did this give you a new appreciation of the often hated character? Did we leave anything out? Let us know in the comments section below, and don't forget to subscribe to CBR for more anime content. Thanks for watching.